Dear viewers, welcome to this series of videos on outliers. In our previous videos, we had the conceptual understanding of what is outlier and we also seen in one of my previous videos how to calculate z-score and based on z-score, how do you decide whether your data contains outlier or not by applying a two standard deviation rule and applying a three standard deviation rule. So in this video, we will understand another method which is called Grubbs test. So there is a formula defined by Grubb in terms of how do we need to determine whether your given data is outlier or not. So considering the Grubb test, we will go ahead and identify whether the data have outliers or not. Let's get into the video. As we saw in the Z-score method, the decision of whether a data is outlier or not is decided based on how far is your data point away from its average. If you see here, the data points, whether it is two standard deviations away from the average or three standard deviations away from the average, based on that we decide whether a given data is outlier or not. And if you see the Grubb test formula, the Grubb test formula is pretty much similar. But here what we do is we calculate something called the calculated Grubb Z value. So calculated Grubb Z value is very similar to uh, the Z value, but the formula is slightly different. So I'll explain how to do this. And then we calculate something called G critical. G calculated is a G value calculated and G critical is the table value from the Grubb's table based on which we decide whether a given data is outlier or not. And finally, we make a decision by comparing the G calculated and G critical. So to start with, let's first calculate the Z score. So we already know how to do that. So the given value minus the average value of the given data point. So here my average, I'm just adding a dollar value. So this will be my numerator. And my standard deviation will be my denominator. And here I get the Z score. I can now copy paste this Z score here. And if you see what is the G calculated formula or G value calculated formula, if you see this, for any given data that you suspect as an outlier, that means you want to know whether it is an outlier or not, you calculate the absolute value. So this is basically y i minus y bar is nothing but the given value minus its average divided by standard deviation. But the only thing that we are asked to do here is take the absolute value. Don't take the minus or plus values, take the absolute value. So what we can do is we can calculate the actual z score. And then if we apply a formula as absolute of the z score that we have calculated, then that will become your G calculated. So here the G calculated for any given data is calculated like this, right? Okay. Now to decide whether my data is outlier or not, what we can do is we need to now move to a G table. So this G table is a Grubbs table. So before that, if we want to have a better understanding, what we can do is we can sort this data because naturally the outlier will be a extreme higher value or extreme lower value. So to have a better understanding we will sort this in descending order right so 8 is at the top and 3 is at the bottom and now we wanted to know whether these values are outlier values or not right okay so now what we are going to do because if you can if you see 2.297 is the calculated z value uh, or calculated g value considering the formula and similarly you will have 3.25. So basically we are converting the Z score into absolute values, right? Okay. Now what we will do, we will go to the, uh, the G table. So I have already downloaded the table and I kept it here. So if you want a copy of this PDF, the link is available in my Excel file. So you can write to us. I can give the email address in the description of this video. If you can write to us, we'll be more than happy to share the Excel file that we are using for this analysis. And we'll also be more than happy to share this PDF document, which have the uh, Z table values. That is, sorry, the uh, G table values, which is grub test critical values, right? So here, if you see the number of samples, so in our case, the number of samples is 30. And if you want to go for 
uh, what percentage of confidence level so here we want to go for 95 percentage of confidence level so that is why we will go for this value okay so the 95 percent confidence level will go for this value and if you see here as your sample size increases for us the sample size is 30 so the value for 30 is so you see 30 here the value for 30 for is 2.745 so what we will do is we'll enter that 2.745 here 2.745 right so this is g calculated and this is g critical so now i can copy paste this and now i can apply a formula and the formula is if your g calculated is bigger than your g critical you can declare that as an outlier if not then you can cal call it as not an outlier right so how we can do this is we can say is equal to if this value is greater than this value then call it outlier else call it not an outlier right and now i close the formula so the g calculated is 2.297 and g critical is 2.745 so this is not an outlier now i can copy and paste this formula and you will understand that you will understand that the g critical value is 2.745 so in this case 3 is an outlier but 8 is not an outlier 3 is an outlier however 8 is not an outlier so this is how the grub test work now you have to understand something else and that is here you have taken 30 data points so you are for a given 30 data point g critical is 2.745 with 95 percent confidence level now if your number of data points increases let's say from the same population i have picked up 60 data points from the same population i have picked up 60 data points now how do i calculate the uh, uh, z score to start with i can say average i can say standard deviation pretty much this sample is also picked up from the same population right this sample is also picked up from the same population that's why you will see the average here is 5.93 and standard deviation is 0 0.90 and if you see here the average is 5.89 and standard deviation is 0 0.84 right okay now what we do let's calculate the z score so the z score formula simply is numerator will be the absolute value minus the average and to keep this average constant i add the dollar value on both sides and my denominator will be standard deviation what i got is a z score here now i can copy and paste this to get the g calculated i just need to calculate the absolute value of this so i say absolute value of my z score I can copy paste this now what I can do is I need to get the G critical and now the interesting part is if you see here as your sample size increases as your sample size increases for the same 95% confidence level as your sample size increases the corresponding G critical value also increases for example here if you see 60 the corresponding g critical is 3.025 so what i do here i come here i enter 3.025 so this is my g critical right i copy and paste this so now what will happen now the definition of outlier the formula still remains the same the definition of outlier is this g calculated value should be less than g critical then it will be called outlier if it is greater than g, g critical then it will be called as 
if it is less than g critical it's called not an outlier if it is greater than g critical then it will be called as a outlier right so now we will sort this data in descending order so the max the minimum data sorry we will sort this in descending order just a minute we'll sort this in descending order right if you see here the maximum value that we have here is 7.56 and the minimum value that we have here is 3.97 so let me copy this and paste it for all my data points right so we will not have outlier just to test this right so we will add or we will make this maximum value as 8 right because that was a previously declared as an outlier so let's make it 8 still you do not call it as an outlier let's make it 3 and if you see here, 3 will become an outlier. Why? It is exactly minus 3.0, that is 3.201. And my outlier value or the G critical value is 3.025, right? So just to show you how the G critical value increases depending upon the number of samples that we pick up. So that's what I was explaining. So let me take it back, the values to the previous value. So, in this method of calculation, you will convert your z-score, then you will make an absolute of the z-score and based on that absolute, you get a cal value which is called g-calculator and then you will get the g-critical value from the table and this table, the g-critical value as you see here will continue to increase depending upon the number of samples you pick up. So, the meaning of this is as you pick up more and more samples there is possibility for you to get more and more extreme values that's why the g critical value increases so with your sample size increasing the grubs method gives you allowance to have or possibility to have outlier which is not the case of z score method so that's why i told the traditional z score method of more than two standard deviation or three standard deviation which you saw in my previous explanation is same for less number of samples as well as more number of samples whereas in the grub test model depending upon the more samples that we pick up the test gives you allowance to have more outliers because that's how it generally happens as you pick up more and more samples the possibility of you getting more and more outliers slightly increases even though the data comes from the same population the sample still can contain outliers so that is the logic friends i hope this video was useful for you to understand how the grub test model formula is being applied and based on that how you make a decision what is g calculated and what is g critical thanks for your time in my upcoming videos i will be explaining about the other method which is called dixon method where we use a different formula and i will also be explaining about my iqr method which is for non-normal data so as i am explaining this you would have very clearly understood this data also requires the data to be normally distributed. Thanks for your time. See you in another video.